So we had to break out this A88X motherboard for its PCI and PCIe potential for video cards. That's because we spent $50 on eight video cards via the uh, Vision Tech mystery box. So I don't think they knew who I was when we ordered it. I don't, I don't think they recognized the address. Patrick and I both ordered. So we sent some to Patrick's house, some, uh, some to me. That way we could mix it up in case they tried to sneak something in there based on the ordering, uh, the destination. What we end up with is these eight. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gigabyte Z390 AORS Master Motherboard, which comes equipped with one of the more powerful Z390 VRMs for heavier overclocks on the new 9th gen Intel CPUs. The AORS Master is also one of the few motherboards with a real heatsink this generation, featuring a mix of high surface area fins and looks oriented cover blocks. Oh, and it's also got updated RGB illumination. Learn more at the link below. So these eight are the Radeon HD. We've got a 6450 in here. We have a couple 5450s actually, a two gigabyte, no, a 512 megabyte. We have a two two gigabyte 5450s. GeForce 8400 GS 512 megabyte, a 2400 Pro 256 megabyte, and a Radeon X 1300 and uh, 2600 XT. So we paid about five to ten dollars per card, depending on if it's PCIe, PCI, or AGP, and then decided after we saw what what we received from the mystery bundle to see if they're any good uh, tested on sort of semi-modern tests. Vision Tech has done these before. We ran an article in 2014 when Vision Tech first did their mystery box GPUs. Vision Tech's been around long enough that they have probably a warehouse full of old inventory that they can't get rid of at this point. So it's a good idea to move through some of it. Now the usefulness of the cards to you, uh, probably not that high, but if you just need a display out on an old board, I guess, really specific, then maybe it's worth it. Either way though, we wanted to test it out. and. Originally, in that 2014 article, and we can show it on the screen here, the cards at the time were less. They cost less than they did for this round of cards, even though they're same, the same one. So previously, the AGP uh, cards were a dollar. The Radeon 2000 to 3000 series cards were two dollars. And then the, the 4000 to 5000 series cards were three dollars. And for this round, Vision Tech increased the price to uh, five dollars for most of them and then ten for a quote high-end or once high-end anyway PCI Express card and what we ended up with is what we have on the table. So these are Not particularly high-end devices. We had to roll back our test bench uh, and methodology a, a number of years But we do have tests on them and then as noted earlier We did two orders so one went to me had my name on it The other one went to Patrick had his name on it and it was just to make sure that nothing uh, unrealistic slipped into the boxes in case you were to order one. We didn't want, want to say you'd end up with an RX or R5 card or something like that. As for the cards available, the 8400 GS and HD 6450 are the only two new options that we received that were not offered in the older and cheaper boxes from before. Moreover, at the time of working on the content for this, all the mystery GPUs have disappeared from Vision Tech's site once again. So either we bought them all or Vision Tech's waiting for that HD 5450 market to really spring up. The 5450 is a crossfire capable GPU. It's one of the more interesting ones we got. So getting two of them meant that Patrick had a chance to compete with my 6450 that I got in. And obviously identical cards or at least identical amounts of VRAM would be ideal, but we did experiment with that briefly using the two two gigabyte cards together, although it was against the sort of the spirit of the competition since one of them was mine and not Patrick's, but he stole it from me anyway. One of the two gigabyte 5450s was a terrible overclocker, so we continued with the mismatched pair instead. Although we're mostly scoring to see who got the better uh, mystery box of GPUs, we did have to work together on some of the tests. So for one of them, we used identical, uh, we used the 5450s that had higher overclocking capabilities to just get a number on the chart that had some chance of doing any frame rate that was reasonable. And uh, for that, we used the higher overclocking 5450s in Crossfire. The Crossfire overclock used for testing was a 700 megahertz core clock up from about 650 and 725 megahertz memory up from 500 megahertz, not too bad, but that's about what was stable. And that was on both cards. So they could have been tuned individually, but doing them together was a bit easier for this. And uh, frankly, you're probably not going out to buy these anyway. And then finally, the lower capacity 512 megabyte 5450 managed a memory clock of 900 megahertz without any visible artifacting. And all this was done through AMD's control panel. 
So the plan then, Vision Tech may not have stacked the deck against one of us or the other, but one of us did get a better deal. And clearly, highly scientific benchmarking is the only way to know for sure which selection of $5 decade-old GPUs is superior. And with that in mind, the first step was to figure out a compatible test bench. Testing PCIe GPUs is easy. We have shelves of motherboards, and all of them have PCIe slots, dating back to the beginnings of what we were doing here. We could plug in every single PCIe GPU that we've ever had and still have slots left over. PCI and AGP are a different story. The only motherboard with PCI slots that we've used in normal benchmarks lately is the ASUS P8Z68-V Pro. And that's the board we used for testing our 2500K and 2600K Intel CPUs. This board wouldn't post with the PCI card connected, unfortunately, and neither would the nearly identical P8 P67 Deluxe that was sent in to us by GN Discord moderator Liquid Paper. It's probably a solvable problem, but it wasn't worth spending yet more time to figure it out. So we began trying more boards that were sent into the PO box by viewers, and uh, we had a few options here. The EVGA 790i FTW was promising, but damage to the CPU socket meant that it would constantly reset BIOS settings, preventing the selection of PCI cards from the primary display. The Gigabyte GA M750 SLI DS4 is an AM2 Plus board and therefore needed an old Athlon 64 chip socketed to apply a BIOS update before it would support the Phenom 2 X6 1090T that we preferred for testing and it also required a CMOS battery replacement. It's, it's old. It would boot and then crash using a drive with Windows 10 pre-installed, but Windows 10 refused to even attempt a clean install. This led to some increasingly desperate attempts to boot into Windows with the NVIDIA card connected long enough just to try and figure out its name, which didn't work. The system worked fine using Windows 7 until we started swapping GPUs, after which the BIOS issues reappeared. So we had to move on from this one, and it didn't support Crossfire support anyway, and could only fit four gigabytes of DDR2, because we don't have any sticks larger than one gigabyte. So uh, after two or three days of not getting much done with these boards, we gave up trying to be creative with the viewer donated boards, and we dug out our A88X Pro, this ASUS board right here. And uh, this one is something we used back when AMD was sending us lots and lots of their APUs to benchmark and review, and I think we ended up using uh, the 7890K APU for this process for benchmarking, and this board finally did actually work. So it took a while, but we found one that could run PCI cards without any issues. Finally, as for the AGP cards, we just didn't bother. We had a board here from a viewer, uh, but just it, by the time we got it anyway, it didn't work anymore. So the two cards that we got that were AGP will not be in these charts. They are the Radeon X1300 and the 2600 XT, but realistically, if you bought one of those for an actual use, you're probably using it just for display out on some old system to get some files off or something like that. So PCI and PCIe is what we're testing for this. We tried to keep the benchmarks semi-modern while staying within the hardware capabilities, but the PCI cards are not DX11 capable and, in fact, had plenty of difficulty just launching Windows, at least Windows 10. We used 3 d Mark's CloudGate and Skydiver benchmarks primarily, with Cinebench R15 and the OpenGL test for extra testing, Unigen Heaven, and for a game, Metro Last Light. Tests were run at 720p because Patrick's 512 megabyte HD 5450 didn't seem to like running 1080p at all, at least not in Crossfire, and he wanted to be able to use Crossfire as an advantage because he's a cheater. Rest assured, the GPUs were still the bottleneck at that resolution. The scores recorded are all the benchmark provided numbers, which is not the method we normally use for scoring games, like Metro Last Light, but it was hard enough just getting these tests running at all without adding third-party logging software to the mix. And then there are plenty of additional challenges too, just because it's all old hardware. We run the Cinebench OpenGL test for extra verification during CPU testing, although those numbers don't make it to the published reviews. It's intended to be a GPU rather than a CPU test, but R15 was released in 2013, and it'd take a pretty low-end GPU these days to bottleneck it. Fortunately, that's exactly what we have. The HD 6450, both stock and overclocked, handily tops the chart at 16.1 FPS average. This is the only one of our tests that doesn't utilize Crossfire, so the HD 5450s all scored roughly the same in all configurations, but with slight advantages from overclocking. And that was led by the extra fast 512 megabyte card. The 8400GS brought up the rear with an abysmal 3.53 FPS average, 
but at least it actually ran the test, which the HD2400 Pro did not. Cinebench runs a validation pass before the OpenGL test to make sure everything is working properly, and the HD2400 Pro repeatedly failed this validation pass. So for the start on this one, uh, we've got a mix of cards in terms of whether Patrick's or mine perform better, although there is some clear distinction in who got the better value. Metro is the only real game on our list because it's one of the very few games that we've tested in recent memory that could actually run these cards. The benchmark was run in DX11 at 720p with high quality, which ruled out the older non-DX11 capable cards. We ran the entire benchmark pass and took the provided numbers from the end rather than using our usual method of using frame logging software. After all, when the benchmark average is under 10 FPS, the 0.1% lows really don't seem that important. At the top of the charge is the pair of overclocked Crossfire 5450s with an average frame rate of 11.9. That might actually become playable with some settings lowered, but impressively, even the stock 5450s in Crossfire beat the single overclocked 6450, although it gained a good bit of performance from overclocking. The 512MB 5450 runs at an impressive 5.4 FPS average, which ties it with the 2GB HD 5450, illustrating that memory isn't the limitation here, but rather the core. This is further illustrated a second time when our overclocked 5450s effectively achieve the same 7 FPS average within overclocking variants between the two. Crossfire scaling versus a single card was an impressive 83% stock to stock. It's rare to find that kind of scaling in modern titles, but still happens sometimes. CloudGate is a test meant for low-end systems like laptops, but it works for ancient GPUs as well. The two graphics tests are the relevant ones here, as it would take a really awful GPU to bottleneck the physics test instead of our 7890K. Only the HD2400 Pro performed that poorly, again, but this was also the only graphics test that it could complete at all. The 8400GS consistently crashed after completing the first graphics test at about one frame per second, but it made a valiant effort. In the very least, the card still can achieve 60 frames per minute which sounds impressive if you zoned out and missed the change metric of time there to minutes. On the high end of the chart, the overclocked Crossfire cards dominate once again, managing an almost semi-bearable 22.3 FPS average in the first graphics test and 18.4 in the second. The overclocked 6450 scored almost as high as the stock Crossfire 5450s, roughly in line with the scaling seen in the Metro test. Skydiver is a real test and the second to last one here, in the sense that this one was made with desktops in mind rather than laptops and APUs. There's also no pure physics test here, instead making do with a combined test that was absolutely GPU limited with these cards anyway. The gradient of scores looks a little smoother than in Cloud Strike, at a glance anyway, but that's only because the lowest end GPUs could run Cloud Strike, whereas Skydiver is beyond their capabilities. And they were removed from the test as a result. Crossfire scaling is again about 2x in this benchmark, with the worst card operating at 5.7 FPS average and functionally tied with an error margins to the HD 5450 512MB card. This again illustrates that the extra VRAM capacity really doesn't help in these benchmarks. Unigen Heaven is the last of the tests, and it largely confirms what the others already showed. The overclocked Crossfire cards were the best scoring by far, and the stock 2GB 5450 lags ever so slightly behind the stock 512MB one. The Crossfire 5450s ended up at 326 points when overclocked, leading stock Crossfire performance by 28%. The stock 5450s in Crossfire led the fastest single card 5450 stock score of 133 by 92%, posting nearly perfect scaling. All right, so now I'm joined by Patrick, who did all the testing on this stuff and uh, encouraged me to buy the cards. So we spent 50 bucks on this. Uh, Patrick, what, what's your conclusion? I mean, some of these, you know, the display outs are DVI and VGA and I think S-Video. Yes. So usefulness is limited, but uh, would, you, would, you, would you do this? Would you actually spend $5? Um. Well, it's a, it's a tricky question because would I spend $5 on one of these uh, if I just needed an HDMI out or just something to like slap into a test system mm -hmm. really quick? Yes, but they're mystery cards, so there's no guarantee of what you're going to get. Um, it's probably going to be an HD 5450, statistically speaking. Yeah, statistically speaking, we got what, three of them? Four of them? Three of them. Three of uh, them. And one 6450. And um, we paid more for one of them than the other, I think. Yes. Yeah. So we paid five five dollars for one of the fifty four fifty two gigabyte cards and ten for the other one. Yeah. So clearly at Vision Tech, there's no actual 
I don't think they actually have bins of like, this is five and this is $10. I think it's like, here's a bin of garbage and just put any of them in the box and ship it. That's probably true. And they also took down the mystery box offers after we bought these. So we may have just bought the whole bin of trash <laughs> from them. I, there have to be more. I feel like there yeah, have to be more. Probably. Because they did this before. Like in 2014, they, they did this. People didn't buy enough of them. And they were the same cards then. Yeah. But uh, which, which was the one that you liked for its cooler? So uh, these are the AGP cards yeah. here. Um, we didn't test either of these. I, there's no reason to think that they're not working. Um, they're probably working fine. We just don't have any AGP boards yeah. around. Yeah. Um, but this one is heavier, uh, which makes it better. Yeah. And yeah. it has a picture of a lady on it, and this one doesn't. <laughs> so I'm, I'm declaring this one the winner. Yes, and there's at least 10 polygons in her face. Yes. So this is clearly capable of very high resolution, high poly rendering. Uh, also, it has a backplate, I'll note, which is better than some RTX cards presently. But, oh, and it's got thermal pads on it, too. If we're just nice. judging by a cooler art, though, I think this gives it a run for its money. Yeah, that's great. Really good cooler it's, art. A uh, guy sitting at a desk. Very perfect. It's the HD 2400 Pro. That's okay. how you know it's professional. Right. I'd forgotten, yes. <laughs> so I don't know. I think, I think we're probably in the, in the not worth it category for the most part. If you don't know what you're going to get, it's not worth it. Because you could always end up with, uh, if you buy one of the PCI cards, something like this, which coincidentally happened to have a cable that fits this, but it's not a normal DVI out. Right. Um, we didn't even know what card this was for a long time. Uh, yeah. And yeah, is that the NVIDIA card? Yes, that is the yeah, one so NVIDIA this card. The one NVIDIA card, which didn't have its name anywhere, and you, you just tried to boot into an OS to get it to tell us what it was. Yeah. So uh, fun, though. Fun experiment for a couple bucks, I guess, if you're in the mood to throw a few dollars away and, I don't know, it's basically a loot crate IRL is what it is, uh, except then you can't, like, you can't wear it in Fortnite. I think that's what people do with yeah. loot crates now. You can't resell it on eBay either. You can't resell it on eBay, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, well, you could for definitely less than you paid for it. Yes. So probably not worth it. Fun experiment, though. If you see anything similar to this out there, alert us to it. You can post a comment below uh, with any suggestions, content ideas you have in this vein. And um, we'd be happy to look into it because uh, it's, it's, in the least, affordable content. Yes. So uh, 50 bucks down the drain, but you get to see what the mystery was. And, and it's gone now. It'll probably be back around Christmas again because that's what Vision Tech tends to do since I don't think they sell much of anything at this point other than the mystery stuff and maybe some Ouch. Bluetooth speakers. Well, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time. <laughs>